morning and Merry Christmas. Uh, we're glad you joined us today. You found us on YouTube or on our website. Uh, so welcome, wherever you are, wherever you may be listening to us, we're glad you're here. My name is Pastor Brad. I have the privilege of pastoring the Foothills Worship Center in Johnstown, New York. We're located at 305 Jensen Avenue, a brand new building, our first Christmas uh, together. So it's exciting. Oh, the weather was a little dicey uh, this uh, morning, uh, last night. It's been a, a little rough. So. As I always tell my people here at church, whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, well, whether the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. So uh, give you a chance to stay home uh, today and enjoy Christmas. And I hope you are. I hope you had many presents unwrapped and friends and family to share it with. So it's a beautiful and wonderful thing. Um, I know for me, uh, I, I had my, really my second Christmas with my wife, my brand new bride. And she, I said, uh, I, what, what should I get you for Christmas? Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know you that all that great. And I, I know you have a lot of different things. So what can I possibly get you for Christmas? And she says, Brad, there's like a million things you can get me. I said, a million? Really? There's like a million things you can get me. So I got her one thing, and she said it was one in a million. So I think I did okay. So uh, glad you joined us today. I just wish you a merry, merry Christmas. We've got a, a service put together here with a lot of videos. I got some mini sermonettes I'll talk with you throughout. But just enjoy, uh, laugh, share this video with your friends. Like us on Facebook. We're Foothills Worship Center, and we're just so glad you're here uh, today. Let me just say a quick word of, of prayer. Uh, Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for each person within, within the earshot of this video, my voice, Lord, that they may have a blessed joyful and Christ-filled Christmas. Bless this time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's um, Christmas according to the kids. Okay, kids, well, we all know this is a big time of year. So I want to know, raise your hand if you're excited about Christmas. Okay, well, why are you so excited about Christmas? I love it because ornaments, Christmas tree stockings, bubblegum. Okay, well, can someone tell me the story of Christmas? The angel comes to Mary and tells her that um, she's pregnant and she's going to have a baby. Do you, do you remember what city they went to? It 
synopsis of it because I think it, it illustrates so beautifully what Jesus did at Christmas time. Roaring Camp was the wildest mining town in the Old West. It's a 24-hour town with, with no sheriff. The only woman in town was Old Sal. Now Old Sal uh, had a child but she died during the delivery of that child and nobody seemed to know who the father actually was. So with all these rough and tumble miners in this roaring camp, they decided, listen, let's step up, guys. Let's take care of this child. 
And so one of the miners uh, took it to his cabin and, and placed the baby in a box with some old rags around it and, and started taking care of it. And some of the other miners would come and, and look at the child and thought, you know, this is not right. We, we, we can't have this child in, in this box with rags. We got to do something better. So one of the miners took it upon himself to head to Sacramento. He went to the store there and, and bought a really nice crib uh, and, and brought it back to his house, uh, put the child in the crib, wrapped the rags around the child again and said, boy, this is much better. But they said, let's be honest, we can't have those rags in this really nice crib, cradle with this child. So they, they went to back to the store, back to Sacramento, back to the store and bought some nice, nice cloth blankets to put around the child in his nice new uh, cradle. And so this was really nice. But Roaring Camp was Roaring Camp. It was always, you know, pretty loud there. And the guys would use some really kind of coarse language and stuff. So they said, listen, we've we got to stop cursing so much around the child. We've got to really improve our, our language when we're on it. So surprisingly, in this roaring camp, people begin to talk nicer to each other and lower tones and more pleasantly, they, a lot less curse words were used. And they also realized, listen, this town is wild, but the kid has to sleep sometimes. So maybe we could have a few hours a day during a quiet time so the child can sleep. And this roaring camp unbelievably became more, more timid, more quiet, more peaceful. A lot less fighting, a lot less shooting and carousing and uh, brawling, uh, all because of this child. And they looked around the child in this beautiful new cradle and the beautiful uh, blankets that he now had, but they noticed it's pretty dirty and dusty underneath that cradle. In fact, this whole room is kind of dusty and dirty. Let's, let's maybe clean up around uh, the crib a little bit, uh, the cradle, and, and make sure that... Uh, it's much cleaner for it. Then they realize, you know what, when we're picking this child up, our hands are kind of dirty and rough too. Maybe we should maybe clean ourselves up before we hold on to this child. The child began to grow up. So the miner said, listen, let's take this child to, uh, to the mine with us so we can do our work. And they placed him in that nice little uh, cradle right outside the entrance to the mine. And they realized, boy, it's all kind of dusty and dirty out here too. Maybe we could Maybe plant some flowers and make it kind of nice. And eventually the entrance to this mine became a nice, beautiful garden. And rumors began to pop around that uh, old Sutter's Mill, the, the, the store in Roaring Camp, began to carry things they never carried before. Things like mirrors and, and soap and, and razors. You see, it's because of that one child, everything in the town changed. The one child changed everything. 2,000 years ago, in fact, even today, there's a roaring camp within each of us. Sometimes we get ourselves in trouble when we're rough and we're tumble and we say things we shouldn't say and we do things we shouldn't do. Sometimes we get our hands dirty. Sometimes we're not real quiet when we should be quiet and we, we don't take very good care of each other. But Jesus Christ came to change all of that. Not just roaring camp, not just the inhabitants thereof. But there's a roaring camp in each of our souls and our hearts with pain, with disappointment, with anger, with all of these things. But the baby, Christ Jesus the Lord, came to change all of that. A baby changed everything about Christmas. So come all ye faithful. Come, let's sing this next song together.
love to exchange gifts. Well, let's be honest. We love to receive <laughs> gifts, right? And I hope you got what your heart desires. Um, sometimes we uh, think of the first Christmas. We think of the first gifts that were ever given were, of course, from the wise men, right? The, the three supposed wise men who gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there was a gift that was given far earlier than that. In fact, it tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. That's the gift. In fact, Romans uh, 6, 23 says, The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's a gift. In fact, if we take the word gift, and I love acronyms, I think the Methodist Church loves acronyms too. But if I take just the word gift, for me, the G stands for the gospel. I know a lot of churches and pastors can complicate the heck out of scripture and the gospel. The gospel is very simple. God loves you. God is for you. He's not against you. That We have broken this relationship that we have with man, um, and we want to uh, retain that relationship. Uh, but it's impossible because of our sin. So God, in, in, in great love for us, sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come be with us, to Emmanuel, to be with us, to die on a cross for our sins. That's the gospel. That Jesus died for us, lives for us, and if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we have eternal life. That's a, a tremendous gift. It's, it's the gospel of Christ. The G stands for gospel. The I is for individual, for I myself. For it's not enough to know, understand that Jesus died for us. Not enough to know that God is for you, has prepared a place for you. If you don't accept him into your life personally. I've often talked to people, my family included, my friends. They said, listen, I don't want to go to heaven and find you not being there. But I, well, I know my parents went to church and I did, but I know, I know. But we don't get in that way. You get in through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's between you and him. It's not enough to know someone who knows, not enough just to go to church. It's an individual acceptance of Christ into your heart. It's the gospel. The I is for I and individuality. The F is for forgiveness, and that's a beautiful and wonderful thing. Our greatest need as people is forgiveness. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I talked to a number of people who are I'm a good person, right? I never killed anybody. I'm a, I'm a good person. But you're judging it according to human standards. God said, be holy as I am holy. If you even lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. If you even you thought of calling someone a name, you might as well just say the name. right? There's, there's forgiveness that is needed in each of our lives. We've hurt each other, whether intentionally or unintentionally. We've done harm to ourselves and to others. We are sinners in need of grace. God offers that forgiveness. Not just for what you've done in the past, all the mistakes you'd like to correct and change, but he's offered us forgiveness right now where you are. The choices you made, the decisions you, that you've had chosen to uh, make, God is with you in the midst of that, offering you forgiveness and grace and hope. Forgiveness in the future. Forgiveness is available to you today. God's not mad at you. God is not disappointed in you. I love the church sign that said, all is forgiven, come home. It's the prodigal father who pours extravagantly into the prodigal sons and daughters who come back to him. Forgiveness, it's a, what a gift. And T is for transformation. So you have the gospel, right, of, of Christ, loves you, died for you, wants you to live for him. It's an individual thing. It's a forgiveness that is offered to you without price and it will transform your life just like the baby in roaring camp changed everything jesus christ changes everything and our lives begin to be transformed i don't mean in a hundred percent that you're completely different because we're not sinless but as christians we should sin less right we're moving on to perfection and all i ask for you is to take that next faithful step maybe you come to church once or twice a year, then try coming three or four times a year. Maybe you come once a month, try coming twice a month. Maybe you've never opened your Bible, open it once. Maybe you only pray when you you in a great need. Pray when you're thankful. Maybe you're giving 10% or 2% to the church. 
make it 3% or 12%. Take that next faithful step. And God will begin to work in your life and change everything for the better. It's a gift of God. It's a wonderful gift. And I pray you receive that for yourself. Let's continue with more worship. Worshiping the one who is indeed the gift.
gift has been given through us from God. It's Jesus Christ, the gift offered to us. I want to share just one uh, passage of scripture, uh, five verses here. It's taken from the book of Romans, uh, written by the Apostle Paul, uh, who, again, accepted Christ for himself, seen his life continually being transformed, and encouraged that in each of us. Uh, when I'm struggling with things, when I'm uh, feeling a little down perhaps, I, I look at this passage of scripture, this Romans road, and it cheers me and encourages me. I, I pray it does the same for you. Let me just read these five verses here. Romans chapter 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint. Hope has not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Let me point out four things here. Again, there's this exchange of gifts. When we personally accept Christ into our hearts as a Christmas gift, again, it's not enough that Christ was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. He was not born today in your own heart. So when we give him our heart, he gives us three gifts back in exchange. First one, as I read there in the first uh, verse, uh, he gives forgiveness. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. Before we were enemies with God, we were sinners lost without hope. But God now calls us his friends. Jesus Christ, scripture says, is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters. The gift of, again, forgiveness. He also offers us uh, a life that is forever. Uh, verse 2 there. We've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. God came through Jesus in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. But he's coming back. The Lord God is coming back with a trumpet sound. The, the sky will split open. He's coming to take his children home. We have that hope. And sometimes we go through difficult situations and we grieve and we mourn and because life is hard and it's difficult. But we have this hope that surpasses glory. Because we don't have just abundant life now. Life that is, is full of, 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 and, and, and worth the living. But he has promised us a forever life, that we will never die, but we will live forever with him in heaven. And so knowing, again, that I will see my father again one day, and my friends one day, and our loved ones one day, that gives me the hope, the best is yet to come. We are not home yet. We have a life that is forgiven. We have a life that is forever. And we have a life that is fortified. That's number three. When we go through this perseverance, we, we persevere in tribulations, right? Uh, it, it, it's, it tells us here that uh, because we also glory in our sufferings, because glory, because our sufferings produce perseverance, that produces character, and character hope, and hope does not disappoint. We persevere through this thing of life. Why? Because God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means. Doesn't mean you won't go through difficult times in your life. And I know maybe you're having a rough week, a rough Christmas, a rough year. God understands that. But Jesus is with you in those things. So we persevere. We keep on going. Because he, he fills us with hope and with love and with peace. And that's a wonderful and beautiful thing that he offers and gives to us. All I want for Christmas is for you to know that you know that you know. That Jesus Christ loves you, he's for you, the church is here for you. And may you be blessed in knowing that.
And now, a very special Johnny and Chachi Christmas medley. Hi, I'm Johnny, and this is Chachi, and Merry Christmas. You know, people all over the world celebrate the birth of our Savior on December 25th. And there are hundreds, about thousands, of very popular Christmas songs. And we wanted to sing 25 Christmas songs in under two minutes. We even have a counter here. <laughs> I'm not even sure we can do that. No, I think we can. Let's give it a go. Just hear those sleigh bells ringing, jing, 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 and deck the halls with boughs of folly. Joy to the world. It's beginning to look a lot like Grandma got ran over by a good king White's less lost. Oh, can the bell sweets of a girl's lost in the street? There's a wee Christmas is here. Christmas. A few final thoughts here. First of all, thank you again for watching us, for sharing us, for being with us for this Christmas celebration. A lot of great music, some fun videos, and I hope the gospel got clearly through to you. Uh, that God offering Jesus Christ is the greatest gift ever given in the world. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a, a wonderful New Year. Uh, this is our first Christmas celebrating in our new uh, building. The old Jansen Avenue School is now a Foothills Worship Center, located at 305 Jansen Avenue, and we are doing some incredible ministries here. We're changing lives. Uh, we are very mission-oriented as a congregation, and let me tell you, just this past week, we're making a difference. I was asked to help the food pantry carry out some boxes to a car for a, a young lady. And I'm carrying this box out, and it's so darn heavy I can barely lift it. She's got several kids at home, and she's really struggling as a mother. And she's ready to walk out the doors. We're helping her carry stuff to her car. And one of our members says, oh, hold on. I didn't give you your apple pie yet. Make sure I get that to you. And he says, oh, did you see this collection of scarves and hats we have? She said, oh, my gosh, my kids don't have those things. Thank you so very much. We're making a difference in people's lives. We had some several children, uh, youth, uh, that we're opening up the gym to on Friday nights now and, and mentoring through work-study programs and, and different things. And, and to see those kids' lives being changed because of our relationship with them. One of our members recently had one of those uh, young boys call out her name and go running across a parking lot to give her a big hug because she made that much of a difference in the kid's life. We want to make a difference in your life. God transforms and changes everything, but we need you to be a part of that. We're here every week. Uh, we have worship at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. Uh, check out, our, our, again, our, our Facebook uh, channel that we have. Uh, we have our website, which is fwc3.org. We'd love to have you uh, listen to some past messages. Uh, donate where you can because ministry takes money. But we thank you for joining us. 
Have a Merry Christmas, a blessed New Year. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. Peace. Say